Hi, and welcome back. Let's explore the expert leader mindset together. When I look at the different leadership types, I always start out by thinking, what do they say the most? The expert leader says a lot of I. I did this, I want that, I delivered this. Whenever someone says that a lot, this is a sign of a big ego. Not necessarily a bad thing, but if it is out of balance, then it can be harmful to the organization. Next up, the expert leader seems to be doing a lot. For example, creating the spreadsheets for the documents, for the reportings. Rolling up your sleeves and doing a lot of the things yourselves doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. In some situations, and I will provide you with an example a bit later, this can actually be beneficial. But if you do a lot of the things yourself, you will definitely end up being very, very busy. Also part of doing things is that the expert leader gives very clear instructions. They not only tell people what to do, but also how to do things. Another dimension that I like to look at is the meeting style. If you think about the expert leader or go back to the interview, you will see that this expert leader primarily runs one-on-one -on -one meetings. Again, one-on-one -on -one meetings doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. We will explore great ways of how to structure your one-on-ones later. But in this particular scenario, the expert leader seems to be running one-on-ones, especially one-directional one-on-ones. Hence, the thicker arrow from the leader to the subordinate. Before we go and explore some of the more positive characteristics of that specific leader, let's end the negative aspects with a final one. You probably remember the quote, I wish I could clone myself. That quote gives you hints in terms of two things. Number one, that leader seems to have very little trust into their people. Two, that leader seems to believe that they can do everything much better than anybody else. And ideally, they would clone themselves so that they can decentralize more and more of those decisions to themselves and not to others. But the expert leader is not all bad characteristics. Let's explore some of the more beneficial ones. The expert leader seems to really know what they're doing. They seem to have the expertise, the experience in that specific area of the work. The expert leader is also someone that gives very clear instructions or is willing to do a lot of the work themselves. They're not someone who just lays back and tells other people what to do. Further, the expert leader seems to be very passionate, very energetic with regards to the organization. And they try to get everything right in order to make the organization succeed. And finally, the expert leader appears to be a great problem solver, someone who is really focused on the most important tasks at hand and really delivers those things. I hope this brief overview gave you a much better understanding of the key characteristics of the expert leader. But before we depart and before you go and read the interview with the achiever leader, I have another question for you. In what situations do you believe would an expert leader succeed? Take a few moments, maybe even pause this video, think about it and write it down. Once you've written it down, come back and watch the remainder of this video. So now that you're back, let's explore this question together. In what situations does an expert leader succeed? I always go back almost 10, 15 years. When I was at the end of my medical school, and as part of that, I had to do a rotation in the emergency room. Back then, I was a very inexperienced doctor. In fact, I was not a doctor yet. But in that emergency room, I had some things that I could already cover. For example, if someone came in with a cut on their finger, I was able to basically stitch it and get the patient out of the emergency room again. But imagine, a patient comes in with all the symptoms related to a heart attack. Pain in their left chest, shortness of breath, all of those things. What would you want the attending physician, the person who runs the ER, who is responsible for the ER to do? Would you want them to decentralize decision-making to me as a young student, not even a doctor yet? Most likely no. You would want that attending to roll up the sleeves and save the patient's life. 
you would want that attending to serve the patient similar to the expert leader is serving the organization. So when we think about that particular situation, there are a lot of things to consider. Number one, it is a context of crisis. Number two, everybody else in that emergency room does not have the expertise in order to do the critical job, which is to save the patient's life. I want you to keep this particular example in mind while we explore the other two types of leaders. And we will come back to this example when we look at the overall leadership agility model. See you in the next video.